Hi guys, welcome back to the Tagger YouTube channel. Today we're joined with Matt Howard. Some of you may know as Not Even That Fast. Would you like to say hello, Matt? Hello. Today we are fitting a Zestec Racing steering wheel hub and Momo steering wheel to our FL5. Now, if you don't know about Zestec Racing, we have just become the sole European distributor of these. What are they? These are essentially something that allow you to fit an aftermarket steering wheel to your vehicle whilst retaining all of the controls that you could ever need. You'll see when we unbox it what it's all about, but mm -hmm. you can basically map all the buttons to do whatever you want. Choose like the startup sequence, choose the colors. You can retain like your infotainment, which is amazing. So on the dials, yeah. you can retain like volume or cruise control, lights, horn. Mm -hmm. If you've got a bit of a sort of track day car or a race car you can map in things like traction control launch control that kind of thing prices this retails at 1250 pounds it's available on tegra.com this kit is specifically designed for the fl5 but there's other kits available for different cars and mm -hmm. zestec are continually developing more applications as we speak you will also need the boss that enables you to fit the wheel this is 70 pounds and you will also need an aftermarket steering wheel now, we recommend a 330mm OMP Targa, that's £195, but because we've got an FL5 and in keeping with the FL5 Type R theme, we've gone for a Momo. Obviously, it's kind of iconic with Honda as well, but crack it open. Yeah. We didn't want the yellow stitching uh, that comes with OMP, it doesn't really tie in. So we've got this lovely Momo wheel here. It's leather. We use the car on track a little bit, but it mainly gets used on the road. So we've gone for leather, but it's got the nice red stitch in here. It's like the OEM one. They will be listed on tegwa.com soon. Shall we? I'll yeah. let you do the honors with this, Matt. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So this one is a OEM hub. So this works with, you know, road cars, so to speak. And um, there's also a camp hub one. So if you've got an older car or a race car, like Suki here, the can hub is the one that you want because that'll talk to like your aftermarket ECU. Is that right, mm -hmm. Matt? Yeah, that's right. So the good thing about these, if you remember like, you know, going back to the cars from the 90s, you know, DC2s, DC5s, thing like that, there wasn't really anything on the wheel. There was only the horn. And even if you did have something on the wheel, it would be a, a you know, dedicated button, like circuit for that button. Whereas nowadays, everything's on a CAN network, so everything talks to everything else. And if you suddenly take away one component, you can cause all sorts of uh, trouble. So it's really, really nice to have this on here. So it's sort of like a, it's a, it's a go-between, isn't it? Between the wheel and the, and the hub. So as you can see on the back, we've got the six bolts there. That'll go on there. And then the wheel will go on top of that, like that. So all these controls are all sort of still within easy reach, like they would be on a factory wheel. And like Dave said, you can have your volume, you can have your cruise control, you can have whatever is already on your steering wheel, you can program it. And even though this is a manual, we're gonna be fitting one of these with paddles. These paddles can do whatever we want. They can do the volume up and down on your, on your stereo, whatever you want it to do. They can do wiper speed. Yeah. You know, you, you can program it to do all sorts. And the best thing to do is check out their website to see exactly what functions you can get for your car. They're, they're really cool, actually. They, obviously, if you've got like a Golf R or a DCT yeah. BMW, the, they're really nice yeah. paddles. So the, the magnetic, such a nice piece of kit. Yeah. Yeah, there's two dials as well, so well four dials actually. So you got these ones here, yeah. so you could do if you've got something a bit more spicy. Mm -hmm. you yeah, and all these nice, you know, these buttons all all light up as well. You got toggle switches here. You got all sorts, so um, lots and lots of things that you can program it to do, and you can really make it your own. Do it, make it exactly as you as you want it. Uh, we've got the sticker. If you show the sticker. Yeah, so there's lots of bits here, so we can have up and down, we can have you know different colour coded there, put whatever, you know, loads of symbols as to what they could be. You know, it's all designed so that you can just put it on however you want it. The best bit is that you can do it yourself, I guess, if you're yeah. that way, like, you know, you've got a bit of knowledge of how mm -hmm. it goes together. All you need is a Windows laptop or computer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It doesn't work with Mac, unfortunately. But yeah, it comes with its own dedicated software to map it all together. But yeah, we're gonna put it on the FL5 now. Mm -hmm. Show you how it works. Yeah, really excited because yeah, then we'll customize it. Yeah, to actually run one of these, like get rid of the steering yeah. wheel, you you lose all the controls. It's it's a big hassle with uh, you know you need some fancy K 
can yeah, you modifications are, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it, it's it's really nice to be able to run these nice feeling wheels because you know I've got an M2 now and my, that wheel and that's really fat. Nice to fit these nice slender wheels that we you know I sort of grew up using. Nice to be able to have an option to do that now. The other good feature actually is anti theft deterrent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this does have a, a snap off feature on the back, so we can uh, remove that from the car, take it inside, lock it away, whatever we want to do with it. There's nothing that's going to be able to use that. And then pop it back in, pull it in. Oop. And uh, there you go. So that'll be a lot easier when it's actually mounted, mounted to the steering column. But yeah, it's a really nice, slick movement. Well, I'm going to sort of pass you over to Matt now, because he's the brains of this outfit. <laughs> he's going to do the fitting and talk you through that. Yeah, so first thing we're going to do, whenever we have an airbag off a car, we're going to disconnect the battery, leave that a good, sort of 15, 20 minutes or however long Honda recommend to, uh, you know, just to power down all the capacitors in that system. Because the last thing we want to do is unbolt something and best case, put an, you know, an error code in. Worst case, have an airbag go off because uh, it's pretty violent. So we're going to do that and then we'll set about fitting it. So I've just disconnected the battery there. I'm just going to tuck this out of the way just so there's no chance of it reattaching itself. And now we're just going to leave it for a little while, make sure everything's powered down, and then we'll go back inside. Right, so now that the battery's been disconnected a good while, uh, we're going to remove the wheel. First thing we need to do is remove this airbag. So on this one, we have a small hole, wherever it is. And we've got another one on the right-hand side, and there's a third one underneath. So I'm just going to get a screwdriver and pop these off. Um, it, is, uh, it is quite fiddly, so it'd be easier for me to show you after, uh, after I've got it off. There's one. See, that's good. First thing we have, we've got an earth strap. That's for the, that's for the horn or live strap. And then uh, we have the airbag connector here. So we'll whip this off. One. Okay, we'll set the airbag down like that, face side up. So to get the airbag connector off, you've just got to pull these little white tabs up like that, and it'll come out. Inside we have a big uh, Allen key or hexa bolt, and then we have uh, just the connector for the uh, like steering wheel clock spring. So I'm just going to disconnect that one, and leave that with the, with the wheel. And then what we'll do is we'll undo this. And then as long as we leave the steering wheel straight, we should uh, be able to just pull it up, clean off like that. No problem at all. So now that the airbag's off, I can better show you what we're prodding at with the uh, screwdriver. So once we've got it through here, you can see there's these little springs here and we're just moving that spring like that. And that pops the airbag a little noggin out of here. So there's one, two, three of those. So now once we've got that off, we've got a white connector. Uh, and that needs to be disconnected and uh, it stays with the wheel and then we've got this 10 mil uh, hex key so we're just going to get that so what i don't want to do is uh lever against the steering lock because you might break it so just make sure you support the wheel the, the gun didn't quite have enough go in it so i'm just going to do it manually I'm just going to support the wheel and the name stop it turning too much make sure i'm not uh, turning it against the steering wheel lock Looks like, it feels like there's a lot of Loctite on this bolt, so almost there. It's almost there, so we'll take a shortcut right at the end. I'll just whip it out with a gun. Yeah, loads of Loctite on that. Thank you, Honda. Okay, so what I'm gonna do before I take anything off is I'm just gonna grab a Sharpie, is, and I'm just gonna uh, mark the wheel where it is now we've got we've got two little reference points here so i'll just mark at the same place as them and i'll just pop the mark on there on there so we know that point there is the top but as i say unfortunately the wheel's gone a bit askew so that's that that's the standard wheel off now that the uh, original wheel's off, what we can do is we can fit this airbag blocker. 
that's come with the Zestec kit. Nice little resistor there that just pops into that like that. Um, doesn't seem to have a right and a wrong way around, so hopefully it just works like that. And we're also going to pop in this bit of wiring that came again with the Zestec kit. I'm just going to plug that in there. We're going to get the adapter and we're just going to feed both of those wires through here. So that one through, that one through. And we're going to pop it on. So I'm just going to use one of these bolt holes at the top to line it up with that black mark that I put on earlier on. There she goes. So now that we've got the hub in, we can put the bolt back in. Uh, we're going to use a new bolt and we're going to torque that to 36 foot pounds. Grab this part here, and this is the this is the brains really. So this is the interface between the Zestec side and then the manufacturer side. So you see they've got a nice little Honda badge on there. This just gets connected into here like that, and then we can just tuck all of this away under here, and then we fit the Zestec adapter. Now we're going to put this bit on as well, this uh, sort of quick release adapter. It's important to know which way is up because you might fit it on thinking that that way is up, but it isn't. As you can see by the back of the wheel, that is actually at an angle like that. So when you put it in like that, it's this one here that's at the top. So we're going to make sure we get that the right way up. So plug that in there. And then what we're going to do is basically sandwich that middle piece there. Screw it in with the supplied Zestec bolts. So it's important to use the right bolts here because if we don't, what we might end up doing is when we go to put the wheel on, that might not be able to click down properly on top. So we just want to make sure that everything's happy as it can be. What's nice is that Zestec also give us an Allen key to tighten these up. So, so tighten it up evenly. Remember that we've got a PCB in between these two bits of metal here so I don't want to go and wrench it up as tight as I can. The last thing I want to do is hear that crack. That's that. So now, in theory, and that is nice and secure. There is no no play in that. The only that that is just uh, the column hitting the the steering lock. So the next thing we're going to do now is undo these bolts, put our Momo wheel on. And that's us done as far as the install is concerned. Then we need to program it and uh, basically tell it what we want these buttons to do. Right, so now uh, off the car, we can fit our wheel of choice. So I'm going with this Momo here. Now, Zestec supply two lengths of bolts. It's important to make sure you use the right one because I'm going to put the one that's too long in here and we'll see what the problem is with that. Just loosely fit it. Because if we sort of zoom in on the uh, quick release mechanism here, you can see we're going to stop the uh, quick release before it's actually all the way through. So we want to make sure that we use this the shorter one for this wheel of choice. Uh, your wheel might need the longer ones. Just make sure you double check that before you fit all the bolts and get it into the car because it might not, uh, might not fit. Okay, so that's it. So now, the ends of those bolts are nice and well almost flush with the uh, with the adapter here and that can go all the way back so now this is tightened up ready to go on the car and then we can program the functions to be what we want stick our stickers on whatever we want to do there you go and that's it fitted so the next thing to do uh, is to program it. Now you can do that with it connected to the car if you want, or you can just take it off and uh, take it inside to your computer, your laptop, whatever, and uh, plug it in. So that's what we're going to do. 
So we have a USB-C connector on the back of the wheel. Let's plug that into that. Plug the other end obviously into the laptop. Wheel lights up. So to get to the software, zestech.net slash download. Download it there. So then we open the Hub Studio. Okay, so we plugged our wheel in. We can select our car and we have a number of cars to choose from. Obviously we've gone for the FL5, so that's what we have. Start settings. So what you need to do is you need to just select new and we'll go my setup. And then you can change these to be whatever you want. So we could change the paddles to be the horn. Uh, we can change these buttons here to be volume up, volume down. And as well as that, we can change the colors. And if you watch the wheel, while you press the different colors, it changes. So, you know, you know exactly what it's going to look like once it's on the car. You can also choose your starting light effect. So when the yep. car powers up, it can do fancy sequences to... Again, it shows you these sequences as you go. So there you go, there's more of like a fade up. Loads of different things you can do. I like that one, we'll leave that one. So I'm going to save that one. Just click save down here. So you can go through the whole wheel like that, setting all the controls exactly as you want them, setting the paddles exactly as you want them, everything like that, so it's fully customizable. And with that, that's the install complete. It's pretty foolproof, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, I'm a bit of a dummy, and Matt's made that look easy, like. No, that was really no harder than fitting any aftermarket wheel. Probably easier because you don't have to mess about, the connectors are really nice and sleek, the airbag, block off, everything like that's really, really good. Yeah, like I, when we first came in, I thought, are well, you gonna to have to take that to a specialist? But like, you just need to watch this video and you'll be able to do it. And this is amazing. Yeah, very, like, very easy. Yeah. And the good thing is you can try it. Like, you don't need to go back to yeah. your mate who's fit it. That's you it. just download it. Um, the other pretty cool thing is, if you buy one of these and you have, say, two cars, you only need to buy like the car and stuff again. And then you can just have one wheel, one setup, put it in that car, and go out in that car, put it there, and your wheels and your layout, button layout, is exactly the same. Yeah, that's right. It would be great you know, if you've got a road car, and track car, whatever, they're similar. They don't even have to be the same make, or, you know, whatever. They, you know, it will transfer over the, uh, the button layout, which is nice. And then we can just unplug the wheel and put it back on. The nice thing about it as well is if you want to if you want to make some quick changes and see what it's going to be like, you can leave the car with the ignition on, you can leave it running, you can just disconnect this because all the car is talking to is that interface that we sandwiched between the boss, uh, between the wheel hub and the, and the boss. So you don't need to worry about pulling the wheel off and having an airbag light on or something like that. Okay, we'll just start this up. Okay, so we should have volume up and volume down once the audio system kicks in. What we do have, and as well as that, once we've done, once we're happy with our layout, you can have a play with it. And it comes with all the stickers you can pop on there, you know, just so you're absolutely sure what button does what. Turn this up. Turn it down. There we go. Okay, that's it. We're all done. And then, yeah, with the added security of taking the wheel with you wherever you want to go. You know, if you've got long legs or whatever, you struggle to get around the standard wheel, loads of benefits to it. It's been a few days since uh, Matt kindly fitted the Zestec steering wheel. Since the last little bit of the video, you can see that we've put this fascia plate on and we've put a nice Honda sticker on so you can get access to a sticker machine. That's always a, quite a nice way to finish it off. Uh, we've mapped all the buttons in. We've done a bit of like testing and stuff to see how we, how we liked it. Yeah, we changed a few controls, added a few more controls. But yeah, it's working brilliantly. 
as we can see, we've got horns on the paddles, which is always good. Um, quite a quite a funny feature, really. Obviously, it's a manual car; it's not auto, so yeah, it makes them really accessible to give someone the horn. We put all our cruise control functions down here. So if we tap that, that's active cruise control. Um, and then we've got simple on and off. And if we twist it left and right, that will control how fast we want the cruise control to go. On this side here, we put all our media controls. So we can flick it this way and that way, and that will control previous song or next song. We've got volume up and down here just by twisting. We also put it on these buttons as well. And then uh, to change radio station or the song, you just flick it across, just like that. It's pretty, pretty um, good, really responsive. So we've got um, the dials here, left and right. So as you can see, as I'm scrolling up and down, I can go through the display just on the left-hand side, and I simply just give it a press, and then I'll choose my new function. Exactly the same on the right-hand side too. So I can scroll through like the boost gauges, accelerator, brake, G-force, uh, the safety features, um, cruise control navigation, that kind of thing. Again, just give it a click and it goes onto that function. Yeah, really good. It's worth noting that you can only program in on the OEM hub whatever functions were on the OEM wheel. So you can't add things like lights or whatever, they're still on the stalks. But with the CAN hub one, you can program whatever you want, but you can only use them with standalone ECU or a PDM unit like an AIM or Haltech, that kind of thing. The Momo, this is a 350 mil, I think it is. Feels really nice. Again, it's nice to have something with a bit of, a, like a less thicker profile. Um, it makes the car feel really like pointy and you feel a bit more like engaged when you're driving it. So it's the perfect solution for running an aftermarket wheel in a, in a newer car with having, maintaining all your controls within easy access. Yeah, it works really well for us. We're really happy with it. It's perfect for like any club sport build that you're looking to do. Again, it works amazing on our manual car. This is obviously an FL5, but it must come into a world of its own on a DCT car or DSG, PDK, that kind of thing, because the shifting's just so, so good. They've got like magnets in them and they just feel amazing to use. But yeah, that pretty much sums up our Zestec racing steering wheel. So. Thank you to Zestec for letting us become the sole European distributor of your steering wheel hubs. We're excited to get them out onto the market. We hope you enjoyed watching the video. Any feedback that you have for us or any questions, just let us know in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.